The One Netbook A1 Pro is an ultrabook that acts like a traditional laptop and with a quick twist and flip transforms into a tablet like device. In our review we will check it out in some more detail, run some benchmarks, compare with the similar GPD Pocket 3 and also try it with the One X GPU docking station for some gaming. First out of the box we have the A1 Pro Ultrabook itself. We will check it out in more detail in a moment. Inside the envelope there is a getting started guide that is in English and Chinese. Inside the box there is a charger and USB Type-C cable. We will include the correct adapter for your country. The A1 Pro measures 6.8 by 5.35 by 0.74 inches and weighs 550 grams. The display is a 7 inch IPS touchscreen with a 1200p resolution. The overall picture quality is very good with high brightness and colours. On the bottom half of the A1 Pro we have the power button with an integrated fingerprint scanner for logging in. Below is a backlit QWERTY keyboard. Despite the Ultrabook's small size, the main keys are quite large and easy to type on. The remaining keys are smaller but it's a good trade-off between being usable and not. On the left is a USB 4 Type-C port which you can use to connect high performance devices such as an eGPU docking station. On the right side is a 3.5mm audio port and a micro SD card slot. The back features an RS-232 serial port, micro HDMI and two USB 3 ports. And we finish with an RJ45 Ethernet port. The top half can be folded down like a normal laptop when not in use. It keeps the screen and keyboard protected. And if you prefer an easy to hold tablet like device, you can rotate the screen and fold it back down. The screen can now be used like a tablet. What I especially liked was the hinge part at the bottom. You can securely hold the device without putting pressure on or accidentally touch the screen. The screen rotation is fluid and remains securely in place in both laptop and tablet mode. The A1 Pro features the Intel i3-1110 G4 with 2 cores and 4 threads running up to 3.9GHz. There's 16GB of RAM and 512GB SSD storage. For communications there is Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 4.2. There's a 6000mAh battery and in our tests whilst running the Cinebench multi-core benchmark to really stress it out we got 1 hour 45 minutes. In our fan noise and thermals, we got a highest fan noise of 58 decibels and highest temperature of around 45 degrees C. The A1 Pro's direct competitor is the popular GPD Pocket 3, which has been around for some time now. Let's take a brief look at it and compare with the A1 Pro. The Pocket 3 is larger at 7.7 by 5.3 by 0.7 inches and heavier at 725 grams. But that extra size comes with a larger 8 inch HIPS touchscreen display. The Pocket 3 has a larger keyboard which is a little easier to type on in comparison with the A1 Pro. The main difference is between the mouse touchpad on the Pocket 3 and the finger optical sensor on the A1 Pro. I will always go for the touchpad over an optical sensor. They are easier to use. But the positioning of the pad in the top right is not ideal but does otherwise work fine. In terms of technical specs, the Pocket 3 has the Intel N6000 processor, which has 4 cores and 4 threads running up to 3.3GHz. There's 8GB of LPDDR4X RAM and 512GB NVMe SSD storage. The A1 Pro falls behind in the processor cores, but leads with 16GB RAM and the same amount of storage. Whilst running the same Cinebench multi-core benchmarks, we got a battery life of 2 hours 30 minutes and almost the same highest fan noise at 59 decibels and highest temperature of 45 degrees C. We will now run some benchmarks and compare them with the GBD Pocket 3. Passmark runs a series of tests on the CPU, GPU, RAM and storage for their peak performance. We got a score of 4116 on the A1 Pro and 4393 on the Pocket 3. Fairly similar scores here. PC Mark runs a series of tests for your more real-world scenarios such as web browsing, editing large office documents, video conferencing, light image editing and more. For the A1 Pro we got a score of 3453 compared with 2821 on the Pocket 3. We can see that in overall day-to-day -day usage the A1 Pro takes the lead here. Cinebench benchmarks the CPU's single and multi-core performance. 
On the A1 Pro we get scores of 809 and 1181 respectively. And for the Pocket 3 we got 696 and 2235. It is here we see a big difference. The two extra CPU cores on the Pocket 3 gives almost double the performance on multi-core usage. For our last benchmark we are running 3 Mark's Time Spy, which tests the CPU and GPU working together for performance in software, such as games, video encoding and decoding. We got a score of just 583 for the A1 Pro and 437 for the Pocket 3. Not massively high scores for gaming, but these Ultrabooks are not made for that purpose. There is a bit of back and forth between the two models across the benchmarks. The Pocket 3 won in Pass Mark and the A1 Pro won in 3D Mark and PC Mark, with Cinebench having higher multi core performances best, so we hand that to the Pocket 3. Who's the winner here? I would say the Pocket 3 is slightly ahead in flat out performance, due to having more cores. If you use demanding apps you will generally see processes completed faster as an example, but processor performance is only part of it. You have to compare overall system performance and it's here where the A1 Pro takes the lead. The A1 Pro is capable of light image editing, basic video editing and light gaming with the Intel integrated GPU. You can run a fair number of lower demanding games at good graphics levels and resolution with no issues. You may even be able to push a little higher at the cost of lowering the resolution and graphics settings quality. This is not a game in handheld and is aimed towards the professional side of use. But nothing stops you having a quick game on the way to and from work for example. However, if you need a bit more graphics power for video editing or gaming, you can transform the A1 Pro or the Pocket 3 into an almost desktop like PC. With the 1X GPU or GPD G1 2024, you can connect to the AMD Radeon XT eGPU and enjoy vastly higher quality gaming either through the internal at 1200p or external display up to 4K such as on the TV or monitor. As an example we got a score of 4680 with the 1X GPU on 3 Mark's Time Spy benchmark. Check out our separate in-depth review for the 1X GPU and G1. It is ideal if you need to edit higher demanded media such as a video or want to play games. The A1 Pro as a standalone product is a good ultrabook and definitely worth considering. It is extremely portable and can fit in a jacket pocket very easily. It is light and can be used one handed in both ultrabook and tablet modes. Useful if you are manually working on something and need it as a reference. The overall performance is good for day to day tasks, whether that be checking your emails, working with documents or web browsing on your daily commute to and from work and workload once in the office. Compared with the GPD Pocket 3 there are some advantages and disadvantages. The Pocket 3 is physically larger, with a slightly larger display. In our benchmarks we saw the Pocket 3 take the lead over the A1 Pro in multi core performance. But overall system performance is equal or less depending on the situation. Multi-core performance could be a deciding factor for you, but if so you may want to look at higher spec devices such as the GPD Win Mini or Win Max 2 2024 devices if this is important. Otherwise both devices are very capable of the job they were designed for. To be portable, used as a laptop or tablet depending on the situation and perfect for your day to day tasks. You can learn more about the One Netbook A1 Pro and order yours today at droix.co.uk or droix.net for worldwide shipping. We hope you have found our A1 Pro review useful. Keep up to date with our future reviews by subscribing and you won't miss out on them. Thanks for watching and we will see you back in the next one.